if the the starting point we can really attribute to somebody we see here um, uh, from Amazon.com, Jeff Bezos. And but Judith, we were talking about we, cloud computing ten years ago, right? We 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 absolutely were, and I think one of the key differences is when you start to put cloud computing into a format that more people can use and create applications and create infrastructure, it begins to change the, the dynamics of the whole marketplace and begins to build a true commercial market. So, so John, you are going to sort of give yeah, us an so example. Yeah, uh, so maybe you could think about cloud computing like, like music, right? Some people can read what's on the screen here. Some of you may not be able to. Some of you can write this. But very few of you can actually look at a piece of paper and hear a symphony in your head. You have to get a bunch of people together and perform it, right? And what Jeff Bezos did was he performed cloud computing in a way that made it accessible to everybody else uh, that was out there and made it easy. It's not that he invented cloud computing, because it existed. He just made it easy and accessible. So bravo to uh, Jeff Bezos for conducting cloud computing. So, so I want to talk a little bit about what Jeff did and what makes this really interesting. So Jeff could have taken a lot of different directions. He could have set up a series of bookstores, and he was definitely not the first company to do an online bookstore. Those existed as well. But what he decided was, in reality, books was not his business. Software, computing, was, was really his business. So what he did was he built an infrastructure that was elastic, was scalable, that would give him the type of infrastructure that would allow him to use software to build business. So what, what actually happened, and you could, you know, I, I'm sure if you talked to him, he would say this was a plan all along. I would, I would guess that it might not have been. But here he found that he had built this incredible infrastructure, and he had excess capacity. So th he made the decision, or those around him made the decision that, why don't we offer that as a service? Why, why have it just sitting here unused? So he started renting out CPU, capacity, storage, to, to uh, uh, developers who, who needed it, and came up with, with a you know, very intriguing business model. So I guess one of the key points, uh, and, and probably a big discussion that we'll get into during the sessions the, uh, this late this afternoon, is that one of the key issues about cloud is it is a business model. And it's very tied to, you know, clearly there's lots of technology here. We can have wonderful discussions. But at the heart of it, it's really about business. So so what is cloud computing, <laughs> Judith? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, in, in fact, uh, our team at Hertz and Associates is right in the middle of writing our new book called Cloud Computing for Dummies. So I've been thinking a lot about this lately, probably too much and even dreaming about it, but that's another story. <laughs> so as uh, Justice Potter Stewart might have said, uh, it's hard to define, but I know it when I see it. And there's been a lot of argument back and forth about you know, how do you define cloud and what do you do. And we're going we're gonna to put our own definition up here, but it's kind of following what is shaking out as being generally accepted as the industry standard at this point. So Mark Benioff from Salesforce.com put no software, right? And what happened with Amazon was that you could now do computing without having to buy hardware. And having actually built, and many of you have built companies where you spent hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars buying computers, sometimes they didn't really get all that, uh, all that much usage. And uh, that was a, a, it was a big investment, a lot of capital up front. Now you don't have to do that. Now you don't have to buy hardware, mostly. And I'll describe the case where you do a little bit later. Yeah. And, and there's a, a, another point about this, one of the aspects, and, and this might be a, a good point of discussion, is that we're beginning to see companies um, use appliances <coughs> to, to actually put some of the capabilities of a cloud. For example, um, IBM just announced something, a uh, cloud-burst appliance which basically stores virtual images, uh, I think primarily uh, VMware, images on a, a um, and manages those images on appliance. So you're, gonna, you, you're not going to see pure you know, cloud versus hardware. There's really going to be a coming together of this. It's, it's, it's not going to be black and white. All right. 
So the U.S. government, because uh, they know everything, uh, has come up with the definition of cloud computing. This is actually the National Institute of Standards and Technology came up with the following definition. I won't read all the words. You can read the words. But it has some basic characteristics which are, for the most part, agreed to by most of the participants in the cloud computing infrastructure. Really, it starts with the model of, I don't need to go call somebody to get a server. I can use a server and get access to it by uh, you know, clicking a button or invoking an API and starting a server and using it so I have on demand. It's ubiquitous. I can get to it from anywhere in the world, from any place, assuming that my company's firewall hasn't blocked it. It doesn't take into, you don't have to care, other than there are regulatory issues, but physically you don't have to care where the servers are located. It allows you to scale up and down in very interesting and unique ways, and I'm sure we'll get lots of information about that as we go along here. And by the way, as you saw from the agenda uh, that uh, we had online, we have this kind of program session, and then we're going to break out, and you guys are all going to talk about things that matter to you around cloud computing a little bit later. There are three delivery, uh, three delivery models, even though there's kind of four on this uh, chart here. Software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service, which I'll actually explain. And then where do you deploy it? Private, community, public, hybrid. Again, more definition coming. But Judith wanted to talk about economics. Right. So economics, um, the more I talk to customers about the cloud, here's a typical scenario we hear. The, the CIO or people running operations are very happy taking care of their physical servers. The CEO comes in and says, I have to cut expenses by 10%. I've been reading about the cloud. I want to move all of my email out of the data center and into the cloud because I can save a lot of money. I've had it with you guys. You're spending too much. You're asking me for too many servers. So I will, I'll pay the OPEC expense for um, paying for that cloud service, but we're, we're, we're moving off um, in, into the cloud. Great. And that's a conversation going on all over the globe. And if they say, what about security? They say, you figure it out. Right. So uh, onions have layers, clouds have layers. Uh, those of you who have kids know that ogres have layers as well. Uh, so in cloud computing... Oh, we're not talking about ogres today, right? We're not talking about okay. ogres today. Uh, cloud computing, infrastructure as a service. Really that what that means is provisioning platform as a, a technology or hardware as a service. The hardware and a virtual machine instance as a service. And some of the players that provide that, this is not intended to be uh, exhaustive, are on the slide here, Amazon, Rackspace, Unisys, EMC does that with storage, etc. Then there's platform as a service, which is very closely related, but you get a little bit more. It's kind of like you get bare metal almost down here. You get a little bit more up above. That platform could be APIs, uh, could be Salesforce's infrastructure for building applications. Intuit had, has something similar. Uh, and it also could be uh, Engine Yard, which is a specialized platform for Ruby on Rails uh, so, applications. Yeah, so, so the way I'm looking at this and, and what we've put into the book is if you think of platform as a service, there are really three different types. There's sort of the life cycle platform, and that's companies like Google with Google Apps Engine and um, Microsoft Azure, their life cycle platform. Then I, you have what you call anchored platforms. These are ones like Salesforce.com that started off with a specific anchor, CRM or, or Intuit, uh, with their financial applications. That's the anchor for the platform, and over time they have opened up the APIs, so you might have a company that has a specialized application area rather than building from scratch and, and, and building their infrastructure tools. They will sit them on top of that existing infrastructure. The third, then, is the enabling technology that sort of fills out the white space. People like uh, Rightscale who have management for an Amazon cloud. And, and of course, None of this would have happened. We wouldn't have gotten where we are today if it wasn't for the software as a service movement taking applications outside of the data center, full applications, and telling people, listen, we can run this application better than you can, more cost effectively, more flexibly, more easily, and then getting IT and users comfortable with the fact that it's going to be reliable, it's going to be scalable, and it'll work, and it'll do what you needed to do and be um, secure. So, so all these things, okay, so that, that all drives 